Welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. This film is all about the recognition and recovery from unusual attitudes. Unusual attitude training is only something you should do with a qualified instructor and only after a very thorough pre-flight briefing. Remember to complete your hazel checks prior to any manoeuvring, which is our height, airframe security, engine T's and P's, location you should select to be suitable, and a good lookout. Aircraft manoeuvre in three axes, roll, pitch and yaw. And I think it's fair to define unusual attitudes as anywhere the aircraft is beyond those you've experienced in your pilot training. Because gyroplanes are not aerobatic, practically this means angles of bank beyond steep turns, pitch attitudes beyond best climb or idle descent, and yaw beyond that required for crosswind landings. Let's deal with yaw first. Usual inaccuracies in yaw can be dealt with very simply by pressing the correct rudder pedal or just not pressing quite so hard. However, we have seen that in zero airspeed vertical descent, it was possible to lose rudder authority completely, and you recover either by adding power to generate prop wash over the tailplane, or rolling into the direction of the rotation. Unusual pitch attitudes are necessarily nose high or nose low. Nose low attitudes are usually associated with cockpit distractions, such as changing radio frequency, transponder code, or a focus upon a navigational chart. And aside from simply descending into terrain, the other danger is exceeding VNE. To recover from nose low attitudes, first close the throttle, this removes the energy from the aircraft, then ease the nose back to the horizon, and I say ease because, of course, any speed near VNE, there's a danger of overstressing the airframe. Ensure the aircraft is in balance before resuming your flight, which possibly includes a climb to regain any lost height. Becoming nose high is usually because you're trying to avoid something ahead with a natural reaction to pull back on the stick, leaving you nose high. In this demonstration, we started by diving for speed just to allow a longer nose high period. And to pass a PPL test, the recovery action will be close the throttle, relax the back stick, don't push forward stick as that unloads the rotor disc, and allow the nose of the aircraft to fall level to the horizon, maintain your control, and resume your flight. However, for me, the solution doesn't really fit the story because actually if your nose high through an avoidance maneuver and you haven't changed direction you're still pointing at the thing you're going to hit it's just you're now no longer nose high so if you become nose high in order to avoid hitting something you need to actually apply full power look to the direction you want to turn and spot a ground feature roll to it and pull a little back stick to keep the disc loaded as you change direction you'll see that the nose has now become low and here you can ease back on the power reacquire the horizon and resume your flight. In this example we resume our flight having completed a 180 degree turn and therefore away from the hazard and you can see that even from a regular cruise speed entry at around 70 you can maintain height. The final unusual attitudes are spiral descents and the most upset one is a low speed spiral usually caused by trying to look at a ground feature from a downwind position with a poor approach so that you're too tight to the feature meaning you try and look at the object, you hold the nose up to slow down and you roll slightly to get a better view. This allows the nose to drop. The recovery is close the throttle, roll level and pitch to the horizon. This unusual attitude is most uncomfortable if you don't maintain accurate your control after closing the throttle. Higher speed spiral descents where you've just made a poorly coordinated turn and allowed the nose to drop are recovered in a similar fashion but be aware of airspeed limitations in the recovery. I hope you've enjoyed the film, continue to fly safely.